I thought it was impossible to do an inverse chaplain, but today I'm going to teach you how to do it and how to do the zero gravity version. A chaplain is where you spin the knife around your finger while it is in between the safe handle and the spine of the blade. The inverse chaplain is the same movement but your fingers between the outsides of both handles. Inverse chaplains are much less common, but it would be a great way to add a unique flair to your combos. I'll explain why I thought they were impossible and why the zero G version still might be, which will help you understand the tricks on a deeper level and to be able to get them down. It all started when I was messing around, trying to come up with new tricks. And I thought, while the inverse of the regular chaplain is not possible, I think it actually would be possible to do the zero G version since you can cheat it by using your index finger to grab the handle. More on that later. I quickly realized that it is indeed possible and I've been spending the past few days working on that concept to teach it to you. Now, while I was thinking through what I was going to say in the video, I wanted to explain why the regular chaplain is possible and why the inverse isn't possible. This is just my theory, but I was thinking that it has to do with the center of the gravity of the knife, right? So if you balance the knife on your finger, it's about, it's about there. There is a the center of gravity. So if you have your finger in the chaplain, the center of gravity is over here and you're spinning the knife like this. So the center of gravity is staying on this side. And so as you're spinning it, it's able to stay up because the center of gravity is like on the opposite side of the way that you're pushing. I don't quite understand it. Anyway, so I was thinking, well, of course, if you flip the knife open, the inverse is impossible because, wait a second, center of gravity, it's about over here. So that would mean that if my theory of how I'm thinking about it is correct, center of gravity should be right here, which means it's still on that side, which means that you actually can do an inverse chaplain. So that's when I was like, okay, how is this not all over the place? You'd think that if the inverse chaplain was like a thing that people would at least, you know, do it a little bit, but I have personally never seen it. Now, I'm not saying that people haven't done it. I'm sure someone has. But I wanted to make this video. You can actually do an inverse chaplain. Now, honestly, I figured this out today. And so I'm still working on getting it more consistent, but I really wanted to make this video to show that, yeah, it can be done, and I think you guys should practice it and try it, throw it in your combos. Quick disclaimer, I would recommend using a trainer when learning this trick, and uh, if you choose to use a live blade, that is up to you. But while I was practicing this a lot, as I would like mess up the rotation and I would just throw the blade straight at my body. So just be mindful of your surroundings and be careful. Okay, now for the breakdown of how to do the inverse chaplain. I have three main steps for this trick. Number one, know that the inverse chaplain is possible. If you're not sure if it's possible or you think it's impossible and you go to try it and it goes flying off your finger, you're just going to give up because you think, well, it's not possible anyway. But since now that you know that it is in fact possible, if you just keep trying it, you're going to get it. The second step is learn the regular chaplain. Now, there are three key factors to adjust to do any type of chaplain from the regular to the inverse. Keeping these in mind will help you whether you first need to learn the regular chaplain or if you're learning the inverse. Now for the regular chaplain, the movement is simple. Place your finger between the spine of the blade and the safe handle, and then spin away from the blade. Now there are three key factors to adjust to find the sweet spot that keeps the balisong spinning. The first one is the size of the circles that your hand makes. You could do bigger circles, or you can do smaller circles. The second is the speed of the circles. You can do fast, or you can do slow. And the third is the shape of the circles, or at what point of the orbit you apply the force. Now, think about you're doing the chaplain this way, the regular way, horizontal, but I'm gonna just show you the path vertically so you can see it better. We typically think of doing a chaplain in a circle, but in reality, you're really doing it in an ellipse. And I think this is because like the shape of the ellipse has to do with where you're applying the force or where you're speeding up and slowing down. This is exemplified in the vertical chaplain because you'll really notice that, yeah, I really have to speed up and then you kind of slow down. This, of course, applies to the regular chaplain, but it's not as obvious when you do it. Really, to get down any chaplain is to figure out the sweet spot of these three different factors, play around with them and see what works best. And I find that different chaplains have different margins of error. Like the regular chaplain's pretty easy, but say if you're doing the zero G chaplain, that one's a little bit more difficult because I find like you have to kind of go faster because if you slow down, it'll fall. Which leads to my third point, practice as if you are relearning to chaplain or think about it as if you were learning to chaplain on a poorly balanced balisong.
So now for the breakdown of the zero G inverse Chaplin. I'm gonna teach you how to do this trick in two main sections. First, I'll show you how to execute the steps of the trick. Then I'll give you the tips on refining the trick to make it look convincing, because you're gonna cheat the movement. What I mean by that is, unlike a regular zero G Chaplin, which you can constantly spin and keep from falling, the inverse requires you to catch it and re-throw it, like this. Okay, now for the movements. You can get into it any way you would say a helix, but I'm just gonna do it that way where you kinda just do like a double roll out. And you can do this trick either from the safe handle or the bite handle, it doesn't matter. For this, I'm gonna use the safe handle. So you're gonna have the knife like this, and as you fling it out, you lift up your index to throw it around your index. Now remember, when you're throwing this, you're not throwing it out, you wanna like throw it around. So you're gonna throw it around, let it, the bite handle swing around and let go. Now normally with the helix, you go and you catch it between your thumb and your index. But for this trick, you're going to catch it between your index finger only, See, like that. So you're using the like this first digit and this third digit, or really more so like the meat of your hand to hold the knife. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw it and then catch it like that. Once you catch it like that once, you're now going to have to throw it again from this position and catch it. You can accomplish this a couple of ways, but you wanna be careful that you do not throw your hand back. Instead, you can move your hand forward or you can kind of move it up and like twist your wrist. But either way, you're gonna throw it, throw the knife and then catch it around again. So starting over, you're gonna initiate the throw, catch it and then throw it again and catch it. And you just basically are repeating that. And then when you wanna get out of it, what I like to do is just basically finish it like I'm finishing a helix where I throw it around my thumb. Now you're gonna to wanna to practice that so you have the mechanics down of how to throw and catch the knife repeatedly. Now the goal of this trick is to make it look like you're doing a regular zero G Chaplin, except you're doing the inverse. So on the outside of the handles. So some specific tips would be, number one is when you're catching the knife, it's going to wanna to drop down like this and point towards the ground. You wanna fight against that as much as you can and you're gonna really, you need to squeeze the knife together between your index finger. That way you can keep it flat to the ground. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna get it as close as you can to parallel. The second thing is you want to similarly keep your hand parallel in its path. The tendency is to kind of drop down at like a 45 degree angle and kind of go down and up because it's easier to catch the knife and keep it that way. But you wanna make it look like you're actually doing a zero G Chaplin, which you do parallel to the ground. So it's important to keep your hand in a circle that's parallel to the ground, or at least pretty close. The last thing is you wanna be doing a continuous and fluid motion. Now remember, you are throwing and catching the knife, throwing and catching it. But when you're doing a zero G Chaplin, it's spinning continuously. And so you want to make it look like it's continuous as well. So I'm still working on it, trying to get it to look more fluid. I'm sure once you learn the movements and practice it, you'll be doing this trick even better than I can. If you found this tutorial helpful, then you're definitely going to want to check this one out.